Warzone is built around the idea of being able to overcome 149 combatants and come out as the single victor. And to do that, it seems like you have to put in countless years of work to even come close to the skill level of some of these competitors. But what if I told you there was not only a way to become instantly better, but to get more eliminations and more wins in Warzone? And what if I told you it could all be wrapped up in 21 easy to implement tips? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing that exact information with you. So without wasting any time, let's jump straight into the best strategies to instantly become better in Warzone. Starting things off, something that changed my play style entirely is tip number one, warm up. Of course, we all know to warm up in real life sports, but the truth is you actually need to warm up your hands for video games as well. Studies recorded from the University of Expel's office have shown well above a 20% increase in what seems to be skill since warming up before all gaming sessions. These studies report there are three great and free ways to warm up for Warzone. One, hop into a pregame lobby and go ham. You're given about a minute, if not slightly more before any game start. So the best thing to do is jump into plunder and before the game starts, shoot as many people as you can while moving around to loosen up your muscles. And then before the game starts, back out and do it all over again. Two. Play Rebirth Island. Since it's known to have a lot more action, it's going to be the best way to get a lot of engagements and ready yourself for some of that sweet, sweet Caldera action. And lastly, try out some sort of aim training software. I personally use and recommend AimLab, but there are plenty of others out there that have a lot to offer. These aim training softwares give a sort of similar effect to a workout. You can work on specific aspects of your gameplay from flicking to enemies or something as simple as tracking. Tip number two is to stop using the ghost perk. As some of you may know, Vanguard Royale recently made a change to no longer allow UAVs to be bought throughout the entire match. This means it's almost impossible to get your hands on one. With that said, you're gonna be much better off just grabbing a loadout with first your overkill class, then a second loadout with either high alerts to help you gain more player awareness or restock if you're someone who loves to utilize their equipment. On the same topic of perks, tip number three is to use Combat Scout. In the new Caldera map, you're likely well aware of the sheer amount of greenery. So if you're someone who finds themselves losing enemies behind bushes and trees or even inside buildings, throwing on Combat Scout will showcase the entire body of the enemy for a couple of seconds, allowing you to get off those last few shots for the elimination. Tip number four, utilize the redeploy balloons. Redeploy balloons are easily the fastest way to travel around the map. If you're looking for more engagements, this is going to be your very best option. Additionally, they're fantastic for resetting a gunfight if things start to get a bit too spicy for you. Plus, below peak, you can actually take this one right here and not have to pull your parachute if you land on the small platform with the gunner seat. Pretty nifty if you ask me. Speaking of parachutes, tip number five is to utilize that thing as much as possible. With the season two update of Warzone, they've now lowered the height at which you can pull your chute. That means you're gonna find yourself able to jump off of a decent sized rock and glide for hundreds of meters. And just like using the redeploy balloons, it's going to be a great option for not only finding more enemies to fight, but also disengaging those same fights if you're not gonna be the victor. Number six is to grab and complete every big game bounty you can. These are normally going to be the players with the most eliminations in the match, but with the bounty contract active, it's also going to give you an awareness advantage because you always know their roundabout location. Not only will you be taking care of these players early on, making it where late game is much easier, but you'll also get an advanced UAV after completing each one of these contracts. Tip number seven is to change your colorblind set Settings. If you change your colorblind type to Deuteranopia and your target to both, it's going to give you much more vibrant colors and more clear visuals in the game. This is going to help you to be able to see enemies at a distance, but also read your interface much more efficiently. Tip number eight, and probably the most important thing to remember is that positioning is everything. Three things to keep in mind during every game is to one, keep cover, two, don't run out in the open, and three, get to where you're going as fast as as physically possible. And hey, 
If you remember nothing else from this video, but you remember this one thing right here, I promise you, you're gonna be in much better hands than anyone else playing this game. On that same topic of positioning, tip number nine is always focus on keeping the high ground. High ground not only gives you the ability to have better head glitches, but it makes it almost impossible for enemies to shoot you and is always gonna give you more time to heal if you're shot. As you play Warzone, something you'll slowly begin to realize is tip number 10. You should always reload before plating as it's going to be the best play if you find yourself plating before reloading then you won't be able to take on another gunfight if your team needs help and you're very likely to get caught without ammo while plating and in those instances it can mean life or death so make sure you reload before plating. Tip number 11, have trigger discipline. When you can't control yourself, it often gives away your position too early. So do yourself a favor and be patient. Controlling when you decide to shoot can and will, in most cases, guarantee your kill. Tip number 12, use the best sights you can on each weapon. You'll see most people using one of three sights, and there's a good reason for that. First, we have the SVT 40 PU scope three to six times or as I like to call it, the three to six times scope. The three times makes your gun easier to control and the six times should really only be used when necessary because it's gonna make it a little bit harder to control your weapon. However, it is gonna be great for when you're trying to tap fire at an enemy at a distance. The slate reflector is also gonna be a great option for SMGs and short range assault rifles as it's very clear and has a simple dot in the middle to know where the center is. But the G16 2.5 times is going to be perfect for almost every AR and LMG. Tip number 13, play the gas. People are always much less likely to look into the gas for approaching enemies. The best thing you can do is to take advantage of that. While they're assuming you've already moved in early, you'll be able to catch your enemies off guard and even sometimes be able to utilize the gas for better positioning and more knowledge. Tip number 14 is to always hold a munitions box. Simply based on the size of the map, you're almost guaranteed to run out of ammo. So if you do your best to always have a munitions box, you won't have to be pushing dead bodies in bad places, leaving you in even worse situations. Speaking of bad situations, tip number 15 is to stop looting. Honestly, once you have what you need, you shouldn't be wasting your time on any more boxes. Your best option is to only loot when necessary or when it's on your way. This will also have the additional effect of allowing you to maximize eliminations due to not wasting any more time on unnecessary tasks. Number 16, throwing knives are broken. Not only are throwing knives a one hit knock to the stomach and above, they can also immediately finish enemies. And because of that, they're really great for squad-based game modes like duos, trios, and quads. Tip number 17 is to always stay aware. A good rule of thumb is to constantly look around you. In a game with mediocre at best directional audio, you definitely need to have as much knowledge of your surroundings as physically possible. With that said, it's best to also never stand still and maybe even use high alert. It can come in handy for awareness at least until you begin having more of an understanding of where to expect players to be. Number 18, use your tactical map. No, I'm not just talking about your mini map. I'm talking about that big, fat, juicy tactical map. That was a little kinky. It's great for pinging enemies that show up on UAVs or gunfire, but you should also really be looking into learning the button mappings for faster use. It's also a great idea to remember to please unmark your ping once your team knows where you're talking about. This is going to save you from a lot of trouble later on and a lot of very, very frustrating conversations. Tip number 19 is to perfect your audio settings. With that in mind, I wanted to give you some great recommendations for that exact task that can get it done in about 10 seconds. So let's run through it. One, double check that mono audio is off. It's basically what allows you to hear directional audio. And if you have it on, it's gonna not allow you to hear directional audio. Number two, set your audio mix to midnight. This will actually boost your quiet sounds and lower your loud sounds. Number three, turn off music completely. That means no more interruptions in the late game when audio matters the most. Number four, 
turn down dialogue to about 40 percent you don't need to have it all the way up because otherwise you're just gonna hear your characters yelling at each other for absolutely no reason number five turn off war tracks as passenger and finally be sure to keep master volume and effect volume at 100 percent to ensure war zone doesn't muffle any footsteps you might need to hear number 20 is a land peak take gunfights rinse and repeat if you want to get better you have to play against the best players in your lobby this is going to be a great tactic if you have some extra time to kill and you want to improve peaks also really going to be the best position to traverse the map and you'll find tons of cash but that's only if you can make it out alive and it's also very likely to help you break your personal elimination record if you find yourself below about a 15 or so tip number 21 master movement there are plenty of videos on this topic and you can even find some on my channel Channel. but the first thing i recommend is to focus on the way you dodge bullets are you utilizing the other tips in this video to get cover hold head glitches and get where you need to be as soon as physically possible if so it all comes down to taking the time to learn how enemies shoot and dodge those bullets a lot of it is slipping and sliding but really just think about how you shoot personally then when you're the one being shot counter whatever that pattern is another great thing to do is outsmart your enemy by learning jump spots to use during gunfights you can now mantle onto objects higher than ever before in war zones so find some great spots that you can utilize in your own engagements as always if you found this video informative or beneficial to your gameplay whatsoever make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss another just like it you can also check out my second channel expel uncut for raw uncut war zone gameplay have a great day